Hey designers, today I want to talk to you about a really important part of my web design process and that is wireframing. Wireframing is the first step in my design process and it's a time when you're figuring out what the structure of the page is going to be and how you're going to organize the content. In the wireframing stage, we don't worry about uh, things being perfect. We don't worry about them even being the right color or shape or anything like that. It's all about the organization of the information and figuring out what the basic flow for a page is going to be. There's two stages to my wireframing process. First, I like to sketch by hand quite rapidly, very messily, as you'll see, uh, to get my ideas out. And then I move on to the computer and uh, will mock up a design with gray boxes to signify different things. So I'm gonna show you a little overview of both steps in that process. I really do like starting out with sketching though, and I do always tend to do that before I open up a new Figma file uh, when I'm starting a new web design project. I just find that when you can sketch your ideas, you can get ideas out more rapidly and uh, encourage yourself to think about new and innovative ways to arrange things just because it is so much quicker to quickly sketch an idea than it is to be mocking it up on a computer. So I used to use a pen and paper for this step in the process. These days I use my iPad Pro, Apple Pencil, and an app called Concepts, which I use basically because it has an unlimited canvas. So I'm not confined to the edges of a page, be it physical or digital. I can just keep sketching and just always move the page along to get more ideas out. And there's nothing that interrupts that flow. I also just really like that I can come on my iPad and look back at all my old wireframes too, and I'm not having to keep paper organized everywhere. So let's get into it and let me show you how I wireframe a website. So this is concepts. As you can see, I have like a lot of my past wireframes in here, which is handy for me to refer back to, but I'm just going to click this plus icon and start a new file. Really what I'm doing with this app is mimicking the pen and paper that I used to use, but just in digital form because it's more convenient. So there's a lot of uh, fancy functions and like, I don't know, different cool colors and things you can have in concepts, but I just use a plain black marker on a white background and that's what I get things done. So you can just draw with your Apple Pencil and double tap to remove something, which is very handy. So that's a quick like concepts overview, but um, let's get into the wireframe. So something that I always want to have in mind when I'm wireframing is the content that needs to go on the page. I've talked about this before that you don't need copy before you start designing a website. You don't need to know exactly what it's going to say, but you do need to know what types of information you're trying to communicate. Right now I'm going to do a wireframe for a sales page that I'll be designing to sell my font, which is uh, coming out very soon, may even be out already by the time this video comes out. So I'll leave a link to more information about that in the description. So on this page, I know I need to have images, of the font, I know I need to have a description, like a little background information. Why can't I spell today for some reason? There's gonna be two different versions of the font to purchase. So there's like a purchase info, um, bonus info, because uh, in one of the packets, I'm gonna be giving away some vectors as well. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty basic page, um, but the buy now, is the most important call to action for the page. So as you might already be able to tell from the fact that you can't read my handwriting right here, uh, the goal with wireframing is not to be neat. Um, I'm just rapidly gonna be getting ideas out. So I'm just warning you, you're about to see some absolutely terrible drawing, okay? Um, I always start by just drawing a box. Um, and then I'm thinking, I'm looking down this list here and I'm thinking about how I'll put these on the page. And I don't wanna overthink at this stage with wireframing. You just wanna go with your gut, like, how do you think you'd arrange this information um, for the first one anyway? So let me just quickly put this in. There we have my first wireframe. So this was what my gut said as the main way to arrange this information. And this might not make sense to you and that's okay because your wireframe is about you figuring out your ideas. But um, if you want a quick uh, rundown of what these pieces are before we move into the next stage, this is my navigation here. That's what that means to me anyway. This is like a title with a description underneath. This is the images, the example images, and I've decided that maybe there'd be a carousel. This is two blocks for the purchasing the standard and pro version of my font. Then there's a little bit more text and ending with an image of the bonus. But I never just wanna go blindly with my first idea. The wireframing process is there to help you break through the perhaps cliches and obvious ways to arrange things and try and come up with some new and interesting uh, ways to do things. So now I'm just going to um, quickly, as quick as I can, get out five different versions of how I could arrange this information on the page. 
Let's go. I don't think it's important that you understand exactly what these things are, but um, to give you some pointers for what I was thinking about as I was going through them. So uh, my original, my gut said just to have like a carousel with the images. So for the next one, I thought, what if we make a big feature and like the headline uses the font itself and it's really large. Um, one thing that I've kept consistent throughout these wireframes is this little notch here being my navigation because I want that to be the same site wide. Uh, so then I thought maybe this is like a, a thing taking over the full height of the header, you know, like much more impactful than having this small image over on this side. Uh, then we'd have some information, um, one image, and then some like other images sort of as a divider in the page, three next to each other, because I've got these different mockups of my font. And then the two pricing blocks is very similar to what you saw in the first one, but um, with the key difference being maybe the pro version will extend a bit lower was my idea that I had here and I was trying to get across. This next version showed the side, the right hand side being just image after image as you scroll down the page uh, and with all the information being over here on the left with the standard and then the pro underneath. Then in this version I, I had the idea of having just lots of big images. So image at the header which is kind of similar to what I did over here as well. But then we'd have another big image with a, a block on top for some copy, another big image with block on top to point out different like features of the font, and then the two things at the bottom. And then I noticed as I was going through this that I wasn't really forcing myself to think outside the box for these two um, blocks. I was just gonna have like standard and then pro with a buy now button. And so I was like, okay, I need to be coming up with a different idea for that because I don't want to just settle on the same thing. The point of wireframing is to come up with different ways to arrange the information and different like ways that information could look and uh, hold the space on the page. So here I've gone back to a carousel, but kind of got it uh, cutting a divider on the page, which matches what I have on my home page. And then for the standard and pro boxes, instead of being boxes, they could be just columns on the page with check marks um, pointing out different features and highlighting the differences between the standard version and the pro version. And then in this last version here, I thought instead of having a clear divider of the header that I've done on most of these things, um, it could all just be one block color on the page. And instead we're gonna have uh, an image with then pointing out a feature of the font that that image displays, you know? So this is the way that I talk about it. Instead of having a big block of copy for the description, I'm having smaller pieces but they like, uh, yeah, have a, a visual accompanying me talking about each particular point. And then uh, it's another way to innovate on these two blocks. I thought perhaps it's just even a, a drop down where you select standard or pro and I'm not going into the details on this page of the difference between them. That could be an option. So there I have it. I just spent a couple of minutes and got out a bunch of different ideas for how I could design the sales page for my font. Um, if I'd just gone with my gut, I would have just had this first version, but I think there's a lot of things in these other versions that I quickly came up with that are worth exploring further. Uh, and this is how we can push ourselves as designers and how we can get better at what we do and create more innovative um, ideas. What I like to do after I'm done with a wireframing session, usually, honestly, I would keep going for longer than this, but for the sake of the video, I won't make you sit through that. Now I want to put a little mark next to which ideas I feel like I want to take from here and move on to the computer. What do I want to move further with? I really like this idea of having a big header space, so I'm going to put a star there. I also like the idea of having the pro block come down um, further than the standard one. I like these check marks idea too. Um, I think I also like this header because it kind of matches with my home page and I like this idea, this whole page actually, I'm going to put the star at the top, of uh, pointing out different pieces of the font. So there's a lot of parts that I like about this um, and what I'll do next is sort of take my favorite things from the design, maybe even this block here too with where the description is actually um, on top of an image. Yeah, I'll take these ideas and move them on to mocking them up on the computer. If I hadn't done this process sketching though and I had just gone straight onto the computer, I don't think some of the ideas would have come out because it would have been taking me a lot longer to do each individual version that you can't act on an idea you have. Kind of as you're drawing one, 
it gives you an idea for how you could do it differently in the next frame. Um, so it's important to be able to act on that really quickly. And that is why wireframing by hand is a really important first step of the process for me. Let me just give you a quick overview of what the next step in the process does look like though, of being on the computer, because um, uh, obviously you might be concerned that these designs here you're seeing are very messy and not understandable without a lot of explanation that I just gave you. When I put it on the computer, these are the versions that I'm going to then share with my team for feedback. So this wireframe by hand is purely an exercise for me to start getting my ideas out. Over here in Figma, I have an example of a set of wireframes that I created for our video training page. Um, actually, I'll just quickly insert this is an image of what the sketches looked like beforehand. So you can see kind of like I just showed you for this one, there's stars next to ideas that I said I wanted to take further. Sometimes it can end up being quite, quite a few ideas that I end up taking further. In this case, uh, I think it was kind of these three came from my wireframing. So when I'm wireframing, I purposefully keep things very gray and not looking like completed designs. The only reason even that these buttons are green is because I have our uh, design system over here in Figma to easily pull from and put pieces into a page, which does make mocking up things in Figma a whole lot quicker. But I purposely make things look like they're not quite finished because I want people to focus on the structure of the page and not on uh, exactly what it looks like. So the first thing I do is copy my sketch, bring it over and make it into a digital version with headings and, and things like that with example copy. I like to put in little placeholder text like this rather than lorem ipsum because it gives you more context about what kind of content is going in there and that's really important when someone's giving feedback on a page that they understand what type of information is going to be talked about here. So yeah, I use grey boxes, I use our design system when needed, but this could just as easily be a plain grey box to signify a footer, it doesn't need to have the actual thing in there. And I find once I mock up my favorite few versions of the sketches, that gives me some more ideas of how I could push this design and different things I could do. So here, for example, um, in my sketches, I had a filtered topic drop down as the way that we we're going to sort through these um, different workshops. But when I started putting it on um, the computer, I thought, oh, maybe these could be tags that are sort of laid out at the top of, of the page and they're like, little buttons instead of being hidden in a drop down. So you get more ideas like that too. And that's really what wireframing is there to do is to help you bring your ideas out to help bring out that creativity and the different ideas you have for structuring the page. So usually I will sketch until I absolutely can't think of any more ideas and then I'll usually try and push myself to do one or two more. Uh, and then I'll come over to the computer to mock up the favorite pieces, but I won't stop there. I'll keep going until I feel like I have a personal favorite that I think is the best way to arrange the page, which in, in the cases of this project was this one on the end here that was kind of a mixture of some ideas that I'd had in the sketch and some ideas that I got when I put things onto the computer. I hope that was helpful for you to see an overview of my wireframing process and what I do to kick off a web design project on a really good note and uh, help me get more creative with my ideas for the page. There'll be links to the apps that I talked about using in the description, so please check that out. And if you're a designer yourself, I'd love to hear about how our wireframing or like project kickoff processes might differ. So tell me about that down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, then please go ahead and click that red button because I make new videos about design every single week and I would love to have you back here for the next one. All right, thanks for watching. Happy designing and I will see you in the next video. Bye.